talking about how the alternative media has been corrupted. The only way that there will be a revolution in this country and overthrow the debt slavery system that the Federal Reserve has imposed upon the people here, as well as revolutions all across the world who are being enslaved by central banks, is to educate them. Once people know the truth, everything else, as they say, is gravy. And that's why uh, Henry Ford happened to say that if people knew the truth about the monetary system in this country, there would be a revolution tomorrow. Yes, and and that's what I've been trying to do for the last 20 years. That's why I brought the Free American out. After what happened in Waco, the media was trying to, to, to paint... Well, we had to, we had to go in there. See what you made us do. They, they 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 resisted by force of arms, so we had to go in there and kill those seventeen little children to save them from that child molester. It was the biggest crock. I, I couldn't. I, I was not only angry at the government for sending those troops in, but at mm -hmm. the at the sheriff's department for not helping those people. The press for staying uh, away. The, just taking the government hand us. All that's all they did. I mean, uh, nobody showed the pictures that I saw of the fifty caliber bullet holes in the ceiling in a room full of uh, children. That's disgusting. And and I have been attacked ever since. I mean, it, it, it it's unceasing. I mean, I've sold magazines that had nothing to do with this and, and had the sales squelched because, um, oh, he's an anti-Semite, don't you know? <laughs> we're, we're going to crash your stock. Well, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it just recently with Helen Thomas. This is a woman who has been a stalwart of the of White House press row for literally five decades. This is a woman with more credibility in her pinky than the entire mainstream media has put together. This is a woman who has always, uh, always spoken the truth to the American people in a fearless way. And she just said exactly what she was supposed to say when someone approached her about Palestine. She said, tell them to get the hell out of Palestine and go back to wherever they came from. That was a true statement because they don't belong there. And immediately, organizations that had named awards after her retracted it. People that worked with her in writing books uh, rebuked her. And then, of course, her seat on press row was taken away from her simply because she stated the truth. And Bill Cooper was the same way, Elias, come on, rest in peace. Bill Cooper, he knew what was coming on 9-11. Just a few months before, I think it was in June or possibly July, he held a radio show where he discussed bin Laden. And he said that the CIA can't find bin Laden, but some, and these, were, oh, these are his words, but some jerk-off reporter was able to get an interview with him. And Bill Cooper predicted that there was going to be a major false flag attack in this country, uh, just like the Oklahoma City bombing, only on a greater scale, and they were going to blame it on bin Laden. That's exactly what happened on 9-11 with Mossad's false flag attack on 9-11. And, and, and in November, a brother Bill Cooper was assassinated. He wasn't murdered, he was assassinated. Yes, sir. I, matter of fact, that's, uh, I, we, we met, this, this, is, uh, this, is a chap, this is my third paragraph in the, in the article, or well, second paragraph, I said, uh, you know, the most dangerous man in America was used in reference to Bill Cooper, author of Behold a Pale House, we, Horse, we were both on Worldwide Christian Radio via shortwave, Bill and I knew that the IRS was just a collection agency for the banker and there was no law, I was one of the few talk show hosts that Bill liked and respected for trying to get the truth to the truth, he was, uh, Bill wasn't an, exactly an Alex Jones fan. We uh, exactly. we met several times at his almost inaccessible home at the top of a hill in Eager, Arizona. The last time we met there in 2001, we discussed merging my Free American magazine and his Veritas newspaper. Bill was a little more paranoid than usual. He had reason to believe that the government was coming from it, for him. He had sent his wife and child out of the country. Two weeks later, he was dead. Police posing as uh, drunken teenagers, as drunken teenagers, were partying near his house, and he went out armed as usual to run them off. That's so tragic, man. So tragic. And these designers have continued. I mean, I had a, a, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Casey Nethercott, who uh, had was running an operation named uh, called Ranch Rescue down uh, 
in, in Arizona and he called me up and said he wanted to help me get the magazine back out after my accident and by the way the alternative media never tried to help me get back on my feet get my radio show started again or get my magazine started again none That's of the no, no, nobody in the patriot movement and, and to this day nobody on GCN or, or, or uh, RBN network will interview me talk to me or let me on or, or, or broadcast this show why is that? what is happening there? Have, have all these organizations been taken in? I've got Christian identity, a bunch of Christian identity uh, uh, to kill the Muslims, oh, kill the blacks, kill the Jews. No, you're, the, you're, 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 you're more dangerous and you're worse than the Zionists that we're talking about. Because that's what they want to do to everybody. I think they're Zionist plants. They're Zionist plants put in the Patriot Movement to try to either discredit us or lead us down the wrong path. I completely and totally agree with you on that, brother, on every imaginable level. This is the conversation that I, I've been having with uh, Mr. Duff over at Veterans Today for the last few days now. They know that the alternative media movement has been crushing them. It doesn't matter what we happen to discuss, whether we're talking about uh, the banksters, and how the Federal Reserve uh, was founded by bankers, the legislation was written by bankers, that the IRS is nothing but a collection agency for the bankers, the, the amendment that uh, they cite to collect taxes was never even ratified. Uh, whether it was uh, with what happened in Gaza two years ago, the Zionist media was crushed. Everybody knew what Israel did to the Palestinians in Gaza. 1,431 people mass excuse me, 1,440 people massacred, including 431 children. In the Zionist media, they attempted to spin it, and they couldn't do it. So now what they've done is that they have taken the alternative media, which was their enemy, and they've sent their people in there to infiltrate it, and have co-opted it, and eventually destroy it. And there's no bigger evidence of that than what happened in Iran uh, two years ago. Mossad started a campaign putting its agents on Facebook and on Twitter to spread disinformation about things going on in the world. But what made this so key is that they were going to pose as members of the alternative media network. It's cyber warfare. And that is more than likely why you, who are a true patriot, a true freedom fighter, and a true truth teller was com you were completely rejected by the people in the alternative media because they're either too scared to have someone like you uh, connected with them or they're bought and paid for well it's it's fear part of it is fear of the Jews they uh, because a lot of the advertisers are Jewish a lot of the people in business are Jewish and uh, they uh, they don't want to hear about it. you know I, the, the, the get just for a moment the protocols of the elders I've been attacked I've had Jews on my my show I've had I've had Muslims on my show I've had Christians on my show mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it's they they uh, they're just they're, they're, it's 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 like. Protocols of Elder, let's see, that was written 200 years ago, so whoever wrote it is dead. It doesn't matter who wrote it, what matters is, is somebody using that plan today to create a one world government? And, and what they're afraid of are individuals capable of critical thinking. They have many names for us, they refer to us as lone wolves, anti-government, right-wing extremists, racist anti-Semites, we're not Masons, we're not members of a lodge, we're not controlled by a church or organization, we're not sheeple, we're not held in mental bondage to dogma, we're, we are not programmed by TV, controlled by the very people who have enslaved us. We're knowledgeable yep. in a variety of fields, we have open minds and high IQs, and we're willing to listen to new ideas, think outside the box, and we'll question orders. We are the veterans re who remain loyal to our oaths to defend the Constitution of the people, for the people, and by the people. We're not the people who are, we are the people who are not ruled by consensus. We speak out if we see a wrong being committed. You know, if you don't speak out, man, then you're part of the consensus. Agreed. 
Agreed. Well, my favorite term for people like us is conspiracy theorists. That's they right. Slap that, they slap that word on you and all of your credibility instantly vanishes. And there's no better example of that than what has recently happened with WikiLeaks. When WikiLeaks first came out, I, I wasn't even aware of them because I heard that they were releasing all kinds of uh, bullshit leaks about uh, China and uh, and regimes in Africa. And I said, this is if this is being promoted by the media, it's got to be garbage. But when I saw them release the documents about Afghanistan, and they didn't mention the fact that Russian Jewish gangsters of the uh, Red Mafia were selling CIA-backed Afghan warlord guns, and they didn't mention the fact that Mossad and CIA have been running the drug trade there for the last near decade, and the fact that they didn't mention that the real reason why Afghanistan was invaded was because uh, Israel had interest in the Tappy Pipeline, the Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India Pipeline, which is run by a Mossad-owned corporation called Merhav. Merhav owns all the gas in Turkmenistan, and they are profiting the most off the war in Afghanistan and the illegal occupation of it. Then came the documents on Iraq. Now, I come from, my family comes from Iraq, and Iraq means more to me than just about anything in the world. And I saw that they didn't mention Israel or Mossad not one time in 400,000 documents. And that was further affirmation of the fact that this is an Israeli intelligence operation. Then uh, Gordon Duff, uh, senior editor of Veterans Today, and myself both went on the offensive and we both wrote pieces that completely obliterated the whistleblower aura of WikiLeaks, and we exposed it as the Mossad CIA disinformation op that it was. And immediately after, the ADL came to the defense of WikiLeaks and stated that anyone linking Israel to WikiLeaks is an anti-Semite. <laughs> and this is what they do. This, this, this is what they do anytime that there's something uh, major happening in the world and that the alternative media catches on to it. They did it with 9-11. You're a victim of it. You're a prime, you're a prime example of it. And anyone that linked 9-11 to Mossad, the ABL came out and said you are an anti-Semite. Anyone that linked the, uh, the, distrib the redistribution of wealth $800 billion plus to the Zionist-owned banking corporations that was uh, initiated by the Bush administration and finished by the Zionist-owned Obama administration. And many people came out and said that a good portion of the money had been transferred to banks in Israel. Immediately, the ADL came out and said that anyone doing this is an anti-Semite. Same thing happened in Mumbai, which I recently wrote an article about, and everyone should go read it because it's information that you're not going to find anywhere else. It's called 2611 Mossad terrorizes Mumbai. It's very, very important to understanding the geopolitical situation in uh, the Southeastern Asian subcontinent. Immediately, people in the alternative media recognized this, and they said, Muslims didn't do this. This looks like a Zionist paramilitary operation. ADL comes out and says anyone that uh, links Israel to the attacks in Mumbai uh, is an anti-Semite and a conspiracy theorist. So, to anyone listening, if they call you a conspiracy theorist, or if they call you an anti-Semite, or if they call you both an anti-Semitic conspiracy theorist, you are on the right path, and don't stop doing what you're doing. Now, by the way, the, uh, on one of the chat rooms, we've got a guy going, well, the Labor Party Zionists are evil, but they're only the tip of the iceberg. Like the clerks at McDonald's, they are not franchise owners, just a face at the counter. The NWO banking cartel and all the intel agents are the Jesuits in Rome. The Labor car, uh, Party Zionists, top Freemason Jesuits, CIA, Catholics in Action, Knights of Malta, Jesuit agents, Tom Ridge, John Cannon, Again, uh, set up Homeland Security for Jewish Chadoff. Uh, and what this is, is a Jewish talk show host coming on my chat room trying to deflect the, uh, the heat onto the Catholics. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, but this, this has been... I love this one. I really love this one. This is probably one of my favorite disinformation campaigns of all time. The biggest perpetrator of this is a man named Eric John Phelps, yes. who, uh, who wrote a book called uh, Vatican Assassins, and the first edition of it was actually a fairly decent book. And then he released uh, second and third editions of the book, 
and he began to say things that anybody with half a brain can realize is a lie. He tried to make it seem like the Pope, the Pope is in control of the CFR, even though that it was the Rothschilds that founded the CFR. He tried to make it seem like the Catholics wanted John F. Kennedy out, when there's absolutely, positively no evidence of this whatsoever, and in reality, the only evidence that does exist is that Mossad assassinated John F. Kennedy, may he rest in peace, because he was waging a secret war with Israel, and more importantly, he signed an executive order, 11110, that would abolish the Federal Reserve Bank and eliminate the power of the bankers. I have I have the uh, a five dollar bill issued by Kennedy. It's called a United States note. It's got a red seal on it, issued in nineteen sixty three. I understand that's worth about ten thousand dollars yet. People say, Why don't you put it in plastic? I said I couldn't pull it out of my wallet and show why they killed Kennedy. And just for your information, there were two riflemen in suits up on either side of the railroad bridge in uh, in Dallas over Elm Avenue. My friend Galen Dougherty was sitting in the middle of it and he saw the two riflemen shoot him. I, I gave him a hard time about it. I said, you know, Box, you know who I am. You know what I do. Why didn't you tell me about that sooner? Oh, I wanted to live. Hmm. Well, that would make sense because Yitzhak Shamir, a former prime minister of uh, the Zionist entity, in the 1950s and in the 1960s, he was uh, the head of a Mossad assassination squad called Kidon. And Yitzhak Shamir, along with a team of shooters, just happened to be in Delhi Plaza on November 22, 1963. And that theory that uh, Mossad shooters were the ones that took out Kennedy would make a lot more sense. So the people that your friend saw play were more than likely agents of Kidon. Well, let's see, uh, who, who killed Oswald? Oh yeah, uh, uh, a Jewish uh, agent of the Mafia. Yeah, Jack Ruby, Jack yes. Rubenstein, a gangster, Lieutenant Amaya Lansky. Yes. So this Jesuit theory, and uh, just, just to put the nail in the coffin, so people understand uh, who's perpetrating this theory, Eric John Phelps, if you go to his website, uh, at the bottom you will see that you can make donations to a company called Lovim, L-O-V-E-H-M, if I'm not mistaken. If you put in Lovim, it's going to take you to another website where you will see that Eric John Phelps is the head of this particular company on this website. And what does this company do? They happen to deal with the finest diamonds cut right from Tel Aviv. So this person who is portraying himself as a, a truth teller and a truth seeker and trying to direct uh, the attention off of uh, Zionist power and the uh, Talmudic Jewish power and the Zionist bankers onto the Catholics based on evidence, uh, based on a complete and total lack of evidence, excuse me, is an Israeli diamond dealer. So people beware and don't buy into this kind of garbage. Uh, uh, well, this is all. You know, no, no. I've run articles about the uh, from Tel Aviv, from Tel Aviv, about the the Mossad hiring people and putting them on the internet. So this guy like this idiot at Intel a News Network, you know, mm -hmm. a Jew, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, Clay, uh, uh, Clay was uh, Clay was uh, uh, hit by the uh, the. Uh, uh, the Catholics took Clay down on his bike. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, I'm mean, sorry. What do you say, guy? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It was the two that by accident happened the very next month after the story broke in New York Times about George Bush allowing the NSA to tap everybody's cell phones, but mm -hmm. the cell phones uh, were tapped by two Israeli companies. Yeah, they had been tapped by Israel way before the NSA, and that was never reported on other, excuse me, I shouldn't say that, other than the lone report from Fox News, which eventually was taken down, and the only way you can view it is on uh, video websites like YouTube. Amdocs, Amdocs, was founded by a man named Morris Khan. Morris Khan had been affiliated with Issa Harrell, the founder of Mossad, from as early as the 1950s. Morris Khan was a Mossad agent, and this is the man that founded Amdocs, which uh, has the data collection on 
90% of the cell phones in this country, your emails, your text messages, your contact lists, anything in your cell phone is not private ladies and gentlemen. It does not belong to you, brothers and sisters. It is sitting in a warehouse owned by Amdocs in Tel Aviv. Yes. Amdocs was one of the phones. I called home and asked myself, where do you need me to go next, son? Where are you, Dad? North side of Phoenix, uh, Sicker Skin Tattoo Parlor. Go down 24th Street to McDowell, turn left, go to the wheel shop. Two blocks before I got to McDowell, I got hit. I was the only motorcyclist on the street. I remember you telling me the story the first time we spoke. It gave me chills then, and it's giving me chills now. The, uh... What, you know, now, I, I've been interviewing people from all over the all over the world, from all religions. I, I, uh, I, I had um, Jordan Maxwell on the other day. He says all of the religions are simply con games used to keep you in line. And, uh... You know, I've talked to people from Buenos Aires and from uh, Ireland and from uh, and from Cambodia. This freedom movement is way beyond just America. Mm -hmm. And people are starting to, uh, all over the world are starting to wake up to this whole banking manipulation. One world government of the bankers, by the bankers, and for the bankers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, uh... I would agree that people are most certainly waking up, and I think that they're becoming more and more awakened by the day, and it's mainly because of the Internet, because they most certainly aren't getting their information from the mainstream media. But people are disgruntled everywhere. People know that there is something wrong with the society that they're living in, but they just can't put their finger on it. And the people that uh, are intelligent enough and courageous enough to go down the proper rabbit hole they will see who the real enemy is from one end of the world to the other. But I, I have to tell you, Clay, I completely and totally disagree with Jordan Maxwell. And Bill Cooper said a lot of things about Jordan Maxwell uh, prior to him being assassinated. I don't believe that uh, every religion is a con game. I think that the people that are, are portraying that particular point of view happen to be the very same people that we're fighting. If all religions were just a con game and not based on something pure and something holy and something real, there will be no reason why the Zionist media is always desecrating Jesus. That's right. Now, you know, like I, I do, you know, I, if, if I had, I said one thing, one thing about our Constitution gives you the right to worship where you want. You want to worship the Talmud, you know, go ahead, you evil son of a bitches. And, and, right. and, and if you want, if you want to, if you want to bow down to Mecca man, just run out there, stick your nose down the ground, stick your ass up in the air. I'll try to keep the Saint Bernard off of you, okay? <laughs> but don't expect me to get down there and do that. Now, now, what's happened with the churches? If you, if you, especially Christianity, if you're a a Judeo Christian, that's kind of like saying I'm a Satanic Christian. Thank you. Right. So, so the right. religions have, and I don't doubt that the uh, Catholic Church, through the Jesuit order, has been corrupted by the Zionist influence. No, I don't, I don't doubt that either for a second, and that's something else that Bill Cooper talked about, and if you look at the symbol of the Jesuits, it's, it's Isis, Horus, and Set, the uh, Egyptian trinity. Uh, the Egyptian pagan satanic trinity and uh, I believe that there is some truth to uh, the black pope uh, subverting the catholic church but it also can't be forgotten that the people that are running the vatican's money the people that have control over every piece of the vatican's assets are the Rothschilds. that's family. right that's right and now one other thing one other thing I, we're, we're almost out of time we got about one minute left but I want to ask you something now this this whole concentration with Iraq, Israel is behind it. They 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 want this occupied. Aren't they just isn't isn't the power source going right back to Babylon where it came from? Aren't they trying to restore their power source in Babylon because the Talmud is a Babylonian? Uh, that's very true, and and in fact, um, there's a lot of spiritual energy in Iraq. And that's the main reason why that you see not only a war 
on uh, Prophet Jesus السلام, but you see a war on Islam as well and the Prophet Muhammad they are attempting to discredit uh, and destroy uh, pure spirituality and pure religious energy because they believe that once this is destroyed and once people have completely and totally lost their faith in God, which is in the protocols of the Elder of Zion. That's something else that is very, very important for people to understand. And not to follow what Jordan Maxwell is saying, that the powers that be, the Zionist powers that be, are intent on destroying religion. They are intent on corrupting your faith so you no longer believe in one God. I, me personally, I'm Muslim. I may call God Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have a lot of Christian brothers and sisters, and there are Jewish brothers and sisters that stand with us as well. Do not let people tell you that there's no God, and do not let people take your religion away from you. Because the eventual idea is to set up one world religion, a satanic religion, based upon the mystery Babylon religion that existed in Egypt, and then transferred over uh, to Babylon and Iraq, and the new capital, if the Zionists get their way, if we don't stop them, is to be in Jerusalem, which is holy to Muslims, Christians, and Jews alike. And the Zionists are looking to take that away from us and make it their power source, make it their haven. And what another reason why Iraq was invaded it isn't discussed too much because uh, it happens to be a very, very controversial issue, is the reason why Saddam was ousted was because there happened to be a very powerful source, a power source underneath his palace that uh, harnessed spiritual energy. And it makes perfect sense as the reason why there were two places that were attacked first in Iraq. There was uh, Basra in the south, which is oil-rich, and Saddam's palace, which is where several ancient pieces of information, uh, like Talmudic scrolls, this was reported in the New York Times in May of 2003, just a couple months after the invasion, that an elite U.S. military squad, a special ops, broke into museums and stole Talmudic scrolls, and they brought them back to Tel Aviv and Saddam's palace was occupied more than likely to harness the spiritual energy underneath. So ultimately, brothers and sisters, uh, I know we're out of time and I'll leave you with this. If you want freedom, if you want freedom from the people that are running this planet, seek the truth, seek the truth without fear, and if you do so, you will understand who the enemy is and the finger is pointed and the trail leads right back to Zion. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you being on. Thank you, brother. Well, I look forward thank you, to being on again. Okay, hold on just a second here. Let me... Uh, Okay, that was wonderful, Jonathan. You've got a you've got an excellent grasp on reality for someone that young. <laughs> Thank you. <man. laughs> Thank you. The uh, hey, you know with with me, I tell you, you know, and, and I, I brought this up with Gordon. You know, I don't know. I I, I have been under such an attack. You know, any deal that I put together, I, and, and we'll do a show. This was a great show. If I was on shortwave, I'd be, I, I'd get a hundred calls. I'd get a hundred calls. Wow. But, uh, uh, but because I'm doing it on the internet, and because I'm blocked in every library, because I'm blocked and into it, because I'm blocked, the, the, you know, it, they say I'm a porno site. It's not that. It's because I got Zion. It's because I got the protocols of the elders of Zion, you know, linked on my site. And uh, so I don't, I, I, I'll go through the whole day after the show and maybe I'll get one phone call. Maybe I'll sell one book. My book, Mystery Babylon, it's got the whole, you know, Operation Watchtower cocaine smuggling uh, deal with George Bush covering for the Mossad. It's got that story in there. It's got the, the uh, Homeland Security assessment, you know, saying, oh, Christian identity, oh, 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 conspiracy theorists, you know, oh, veterans are, are, are dangerous, veterans are dangerous. It's got all this crap. 
you know, they, they put two magazines out of business. I'm not selling any books. And I don't quite know where to go. I don't know what to do. I mean, I won't, uh, you know, I just can't just curl up and die. And and they tried to put me in long-term care. They tried to do, uh, I had Paul Pantone on. He did Geet. And, and we've known each other for 20 years. They put him 